The problem James has in writing to the church is deception has come into the church. Deception has come into the church and the fact is that people are mixing Christian values, Christian biblical teaching with deception. Example, in this church right now, there's deception in this church. There's people in this room who think you can mix Jesus with sorcery. Some of you, you, you have to read your horoscope every day. Some of you, if there's a black cat on the sidewalk, you walk around the black cat and, and try to stay away from it. I, I think that's really prejudice. And, and then there's some of you, you look at ladders and you won't go under it. And then some of you, you carry a rabbit's foot saying it's good luck, but when you really think about it, it was bad luck for the rabbit. <laughs> James, James is fighting with deception. James is fighting with deception. And what he starts off with in James chapter 1, verse 16, do not be deceived, my dear brethren. Do not be deceived. What, what, every good and perfect gift is from above and it comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning or shifting shadows. Now, this is what it says, every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. So, so what he says is good and perfect gift is from above. And where does it come from? Father God. And then he says, Father God is the Father of lights. And he uses a plural lights. In other words, it, 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 there are many different kinds of darknesses, but he has many kinds of lights. I, I want to show you this, okay? This, this is a laser. I'm not going to shine this at you. Trust me. But see, look up there. See how the... Now, back in Jesus' day, there's supposed to be smoke coming out there. See, the fact is this, even when there's smoke coming out of the smoke machine over here, okay, which, not a lot of smoke. I see more smoke outside the church than I see this. The fact is this, it goes right through. Now, let me just share this. In Jesus' day, people had lanterns, they had little oil lamps and stuff. They didn't have lights like this. If I had a flashlight and shined it through that smoke, there would be shadows and stuff like this. The fact is this with the laser, the beam can go straight through. The beam can go straight through. And, and, and what happens is the beam is so strong that you can even see the beam going there. And what, 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 what James is saying here is this, that the Father of lights, Father God, he, 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 he's so constant, he's so consistent, he's so powerful that he can even penetrate through clouds, he can penetrate through. What he's saying is this, there is no darkness, there is no darkness that is going to get in the way of the Father of lights. Did you hear this? There is no darkness that's going to get in the way of the Father of lights. Now, now watch this. You see, the point is this, the power of the laser. Well, the laser is nothing compared to the Father of lights in heaven. So then he goes on and he says this. What he says this, of his own Father God, on his own will, he brought forth by the word of truth that we might be the kind of first fruit of his creation. In other words, we're priority. We're priority. Now this is what it says in Luke chapter 11. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent instead of fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, the Father of lights, who gives good and perfect gifts, give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, this is the scripture, Matthew 7, which people get mixed up on. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. Everyone who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or, or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, father of lights, who gives good gifts from heaven, who gives good things to those who ask him? 
Now, I want to deal with a controversial passage, okay? And for some of you who are not into this, just pay attention, you're gonna love this. Matthew 11, 13 and Matthew 7, 11 says the same thing but says it differently. Watch what it says. It says, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? But in Matthew 7, 11, it says, how much more will your Father who is heaven give good things to who ask him? Now, one says Holy Spirit and one says good things. But both scriptures are the same. Wait, Billy, one says Holy Spirit and one says good things. How can both scriptures be the same? Watch. What happens is this, how much more, Luke 11, 13, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You can't get good things unless the Holy Spirit gives it to you. See, Father God gives good things through the Holy Spirit. So what, what, what Luke is saying is this, how much more will your heavenly Father give you good things through the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Well, Matthew says it a little different. What he says, is, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things? And then he thinks you already know this, through the Holy Spirit, to those who ask. See, here's the key. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. When you receive the good and perfect gifts from above, like James is talking, from the Father of lights, which is Father God, you receive them through the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go back to our scripture. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Number one, every good and perfect gift is from above. The heavenly realm is full of blessing, and God the Father wants to give it to you. When I wake up in the morning, not every morning, but nearly every morning, I go after the blessings of God. It's ludicrous for some of you to say, you know, I'm totally broke, and yet in your bank account you have millions of dollars. See, it's just absolutely crazy when you find out how, how some people, honestly, there was a man downtown Toronto when I worked at Stone Church. He, he was a street person, and, and, and he had a, 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 um, a shopping cart, and he had all his belongings in it. When they found him dead on the street, the police took his shopping cart down to the police station, started taking his belongings apart, and there inside they found over $4,000 in his shopping cart. Yet the man was always begging for food, always begging for shelter, always begging for clothes, yet he had $4,000. See, here's the craziest thing. The heavenly realm is full of blessing. When was the last time you woke up in the morning and you went after the blessing? When I walk up to the cash machine, if we have machine, if we have money in the bank and I put my card in and I press my code, and then I, I say withdraw $20, I expect the machine to give it to me. Well, listen, when was the last time you expected Father God to bless you? Well, if you're not expecting it, then you don't know the Bible. He gave his son Jesus Christ so that we could have blessing. And the Father of lights wants to give you, not tomorrow, but today, and every day, good and perfect gifts. Number two is this. Comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning or shifting shadow. The Father God is consistent. Father God, there's no variation. He, he, he is exact. He's more consistent than anything we can create like a laser. Now, let's stop. For some of you, you say, well, I've asked, and I saw it, and I knocked, and he didn't give me it. Did he give you your will, or did he give you his will? Sometimes his will doesn't look good and perfect.
to us. Sometimes we say, well, this isn't good and perfect. I mean, the scripture says good and perfect, but my mother had four, four, four boys she gave birth to. Jimmy's the oldest, Jackie, Peter, and then myself. Peter lived for two days. Peter died in my mother's arms in the hospital. When Peter was born, he looked healthy. And then just after birth, everything started going south. My mother, after my father buried Peter down at Mount Pleasant Cemetery, my, my mother nearly had a nervous breakdown, losing a baby. Devastated, absolutely devastated. She went to the doctor and doctor said to her, and her name's Juanita, said, Juanita, have another baby. And then all of a sudden, a couple years later, the earth received Billy. <laughs> and many a days my dad thought, is this a good and perfect gift? I don't know if you've ever been to a children's, a child's funeral. And you sit there and you say, every good and perfect gift comes from Father God. What is this? Later on in life when I was a snippy teenager, and I was the only snippy teenager that ever lived, there are no such thing as snippy teenagers now. I was trying to challenge my dad and mom on good and perfect gifts from the Father of Lights. And I say, you know, if God is so good and so loving and so merciful and so just, you know, the, the, the lines that people use. He would never have taken Peter. And my mom sat up and, and my mom looked at me and said, don't you ever talk that way about Father God. We have no idea why Father God took Peter, but every good and perfect gift comes from Father God. And although that my human mind cannot understand why he did that, you have to remember I still only have a human mind, and he is God. And then my mother looked at me and said, by the way, just so you know, every good and perfect gift, if Peter did not go to be with Jesus, we would never have had you. And she says, although I do not understand the ways of God and his will, I do trust that every good and every good, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father God. And I just looked at her and said, okay. Because when she sat up, you knew that if I didn't agree with her, I was going to go be with Peter. <laughs> so somebody says to me, so what? So what? I know what you're thinking. Number one, get Father God's good and perfect gifts, his will. Number two, ask, seek, and knock. Let's put these two together. When I was 14 years old, and, and my friend Mark and I, we, we knew each other, we grew up together. I'm 14 years old, I saw this most gorgeous girl. I mean, she was, she was the package. And I read this scripture, ask, and it will be given to you, seek, you shall find knock. And, the, and I go, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> She's the one. At 14 years of age, I claimed her for my wife. I know a lot of people are going to be upset with me, but a couple years ago, I saw her. And I would like to thank God. <laughs> it's not every good Billy's gift 
or every perfect Billy's gift comes down from heaven. It's Father God. Father knows best. And there are so many prayers that I have prayed, and today I would like to say thank you, Jesus, that he doesn't answer all my prayers. Because there's so many times I have prayed and I look back and God did not do it my way, but he did it his way. And I would like to say, oh, thank you, Jesus. But number two, here's the problem we face. Ask, seek, knock. Most of us are lazy, good-for-nothing Christians in lazy boy chairs. When the Bible says ask, seek, and knock, what God is looking for is a fervent Christian who has passion and persistent. The Bible says to go before the, the throne of God with boldness and confidence. When was the last time you fasted to get the good and perfect gift of God, not of your will, but his will? When was the last time you, you went into your closet in prayer and you prayed like Jesus did in Gethsemane with, with sweat so much it looked like drops of blood? When was the last time you got friends around you and you called your friends to pray? See, here's the problem. A lot of us aren't getting the good and perfect gifts of heaven. And the reason we're not getting the good and perfect gifts of heaven is we have lost the, the passion of asking and seeking and knocking. The word ask there means to show your faith, faith in God and show, show your faith in God in such a way that you keep going like Paul did with the thorn in the flesh three times. I pleaded that the thorn be taken away. What was God's will in that? The thorn never left Paul, but instead Paul turns around in the next sentence and says this, but I'm so thrilled in my weakness with this thorn, I have become stronger in Christ. Therefore, let the thorn stay. Why? Because in this weakness, I'm strong. Seeking Jesus in Gethsemane three times goes back to the Father God, Lord, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. Three times seeking. What did he seek for? Not his will. He sought for the Father's will. Knocking. Knocking so hard. Keep knocking until the door opens. Not for my will, but for his will. Most of us, we get so discouraged, we leave in step number one, asking. We don't even try seeking and knocking. Instead, of, God wants us to persist. Number three, make sure it's Father God. It's good and perfect gift, not your wants. Yesterday, we were talking to our son, about the miracles of God. There's a, a lady who I love very much. Nearly every Sunday I mention her name, Shelley. She never comes up here. To get her up here is like pulling teeth. But I begged her if she would come, and she said she would. Thank you. Thank you. Growing up, I was one of those really sick kids. I remember in first grade, I had a birthday party, and that was the last birthday party I had for years and years because I was always too sick. And every year I was in the hospital after that, and um, in emergency and high fevers and everything like that. So I was in grade seven, it was the week before my birthday, and I was gonna have a party, and I got sick. And um, I got sicker and sicker, so on Saturday they admitted me to the hospital to start some really serious investigations because my blood had become so thin, my body had stopped making platelets, and I was basically hemorrhaging. I was getting these little petechiae, which are just little pinpoint hemorrhages all over your body, and um, I was just bleeding internally. And so every day they did more investigations, and the doctor would come in first thing in the morning, and he would give us the bad news that things were worse today than they were the day before. 
so for my uh, birthday in grade seven, I spent it in the hospital, and my family all gathered around me and, you know, thank the Lord that I'm from a, a, a praying family and a, a church that prayed for me because I was admitting on, admitted on Saturday, and the church started praying for me on Sunday as soon as they found out. And so on my birthday, the doctor comes in and in the morning and he says, well, you know what, uh, uh, I mean, they're investigating me for leukemia and they're talking about doing a bone marrow biopsy. And so he said, Shelley, well, you know, what do you think the blood work's going to be today? And I, I gave this number and the doctor says to me, well, we, we can't do that number, Shelley, because the body can't humanly reproduce that many platelets in a 24-hour period. So they did the blood work, and the doctor always comes in in the morning. He showed up after work that evening, and my family were there, and he showed up to say to me, Shelly, you have your miracle. Your platelets are the exact number you said they were going to be, and I'm telling you, this is a miracle. And I just, you know, I just want to thank God, the giver of all good gifts, because he is the father of light, and, and he just did a miracle for us. See, here, here's the craziest thing. Does God answer all our prayers? Yes, but not our way, His way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, the Father knows best. When I was two years old, all I wanted to do was eat ice cream and candy. And mom and dad said, that's not healthy. You need the right diet. Now that I'm ancient, I look back and I say, thank God my parents didn't just feed me ice cream and candy. Father knows best. Here, here, here's the last part of the sermon. Ask. Seek. Knock. Most of us, we, we don't have a prayer life. Most of us, when we pray, it's just repetitious that we do every day. Most of us haven't learned to go into the throne of God in prayer and be able to get the good and perfect gifts. It's like the man who says he's broke and yet there's so much money in the bank and all he has to do is go to the bank and withdraw. If an evil father knows how to give good gifts, how much more does your Father of lights know how to give you, through the Holy Spirit, good gifts? Every, every, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. <laughs>